All right, so we're going through this regular verb, uh, regular preterite verb practice. We did some of this in class, depending on which class you were in, we got further into it than others. So here it is. Um, these are the same verb charts from the review, so if they're a little fuzzy, then you can look at that. Um, <clears throat> all right, so regular preterite verb practice. I've already sung this song for y'all a couple of times. Not going to do it again. Oh, you twisted my arm. Just kidding. That's not gonna not gonna sing it. Anyway, uh, regular AR verbs and regular ERIR verbs. All you gotta do is take off the ending, put on the new ending. It's that easy. So Marta habló con su mamá ayer. Laura y tú estudiaron. Yo caminé. Nosotros no comimos. El oso nos asustó. El hombre se entrenó. Those are pretty easy. Car gardens are. These are also regular verbs, except for in the yo form. Uh, and again, they're car gardens are because they end in car, or they end in gar, or they end in czar. And in the yo form, car becomes k, gar becomes gay, and czar becomes se. Um, and these are just spelling issues um, or pronunciation issues. C with an e after it becomes soft, like almor se over here. Um, so I want it to be a K sound, so I had to do the Q-U. Same thing, this would be G, like algebra, so I put the G-U-E to give me that G sound, so G. Uh, yo me acerqué al oso muy lentamente, uh, lentamente, sorry. Marta jugó con el bebé ayer. Be careful, just because it's a gar verb doesn't mean it's weird in any other form than the yo form. So Marta jugó con el bebé ayer. Yo jugué con el bebé ayer. Uh, yo pagué por mi café en Starbucks esta mañana. La semana pasada, yo almorcé en Subway con mi abuelo. Yo no llegué a la fiesta hasta las 11. Mi hermana empezó a llorar. Again, empezó, that stays normal. If it was yo empecé a llorar, cuando vi al oso, I could have done it that way. But the subject here was mi hermana. Yo no toqué el piano porque no sabía tocarlo. Eh, Miguel se acercó a la fogata para bailar. Se acercó. Me acerqué, like this up here, or se acercó when I'm talking about Miguel. All right, moving right along. Ir, ser, dar, and ver. Finally, I can say it. Ir and ser have the exact same verb chart, this one right here. Um, and they are not related at all in real life, but in the past tense, excuse me, in the preterite tense, they share the same verb chart. Uh, dar has its own and ver has its own. So, fui, fuiste, fue, fuimos, fuiste, fuiste uh, fueron. And then, di, diste, dio, vi, uh, dimos, diste, sendieron. Vi, viste, vio, vimos, viste, sendieron. Obviously, this is like the exact same thing, except for D or V. So those should be your friends as well. They're, they're cousins. They get along. Uh, ear and ser, obviously they mean two different things, but they have the exact same verb chart. Now all of these don't have any accents, as is the same for the irregular preterites, and I'll skip to those in a few minutes. But um, So no accents here. Fui, fui, stay fue, this ear and ser chart is the weirdest one, because in the LA and usted box right here, fue ends in an E, whereas every other verb we're going to see ends in an O somehow. So this is the weird one. I like to remember it E for everyone else, I for me, um, but you do whatever you need to do. So this is the most unique verb box in the preterite. These are also weird, but uh, they follow a little bit more of the path. The big deal here is that they don't have any accents. Um, all right. Uh, Maria fue al parque. Uh, Martini y Julia fueron. Mis padres vieron, todavía no le di de comer a mi perro. It was implied that it would be me doing the feeding because it's mi perro. Uh, but on the test, I'm sure that I would say, todavía yo no le blank, whatever, de comer. All right, now choose the correct uh, verb, ir, ser, dar, and ver. Uh, oops, accidentally put a star in there. So, yo fui a México para visitar a mis abuelos. En el aeropuerto yo vi a una estatua de Cristóbal Colón. So, one hint is that it has a, but a also follows ear and ar. <laughs> so, never mind. Uh, the big deal is if you knew that estatua is a statue, then what do you do with the statue? You see it. You don't go it. You don't was it. And you don't, like, give it. Um, and then pedí un taxi. I asked for a cab. 
Cuando llegué a la casa de mis abuelos, le di 20 dólares al taxista. So I gave him 20 dollars. What do you do with 20 dollars? You could see it, but if I just arrived at the house with my cab, uh, most likely I'm going to pay my cabbie. Pero mis abuelos no estuvieron, they weren't there. Entonces yo, se, yo decidí ir a la casa de sus vecinos. Don't forget, if you've got a conjugated verb before the uh, blank, then it's going to stay in its infinitive form. You've got at least one of those on your test, so hopefully you pay attention to that. Yo decidí ir a la casa de sus vecinos. Pasé una hora ahí y a las ocho de la noche yo vi los faros del coche de mis abuelos. I saw the headlights. Uh, regresé a su casa y comimos la cena. Después de la cena, mis abuelos y yo fuimos al cine. We went to the movie theater para ver una película. Para is another um, preposition. So para and de are the two that you've learned so far that when you see them, it's always going to be the infinitive afterwards. And I'll work on a little list for y'all for that. So, okay, so we're just talking about ir, ser, dar, and ver. And they are the most closely related, in my opinion, to irregular preterite verbs. And the reason for that is that they do not have accents either, okay? They are somewhat similar in their charts. This is obviously different. They have an E up here instead of an I. And they have uh, an O down here, which is uh, somewhat similar, but they've got IO. So, so the charts are a little bit different, but the big deal is none of them have accents. So, ear, ser, darn, ver, and these irregular preterites don't have accents. And what I said on your review page, I'm going to say again, or say previously, um, is that you really just need to memorize these guys. Um, there's 10 verbs here, and if you can memorize the 10 verbs stems, like tuve, anduve, estuve, and if you can memorize this chart right here, it's a lot easier than memorizing this chart, then this chart, then this chart, then this chart, and so on and so forth. So, uh, anyway, you've got tuve is tener, anduve is andar, estuve is a star, pud is poder, pus is poner, sup is saber, vin is from venir, dih is from decir, Traher, uh, trach is from traer, sorry, uh, and is is from hacer. So you've got those, and then you've got these endings right here. And again, the stinking thing is missing. Hold on a second. I'm just going to refer you to the uh, review, the chapter 1A review for this. Uh, I'm going to say it real quick, but if you want the spelling, it's tuvo, tuvieron, anduvo, anduvieron, estuvo, estuvieron, pudo, pudieron. Now, do you notice that these are all UV at the end? So maybe you group those three together. Uh, pud, pus, soup, they're all U, whatever. I don't know if that helps. Vin is kind of on its own right here. And then you've got dich and trach that both end in J. And then is, uh, acer just is a little bit weird. Uh, now you'll notice that all of these follow this chart just like good little children except for and the eos eos ustedes form, these two right here that end in J are going to have eron as their ending instead of ieron. Okay, you see how it says ieron? These are just eron. Okay, so that's why that's highlighted blue there. And then this should be ico, H I C O, but if you heard me, I just said ico, and we wanted a soft sound, so we put a Z there. Because, like I said on the review, the the C O makes a hard sound, and I want it to be a soft sound like e se and hiciste. So I put a Z there so that it would be iso, same sound. All right, moving on. So here's your practice, and again, this is good practice for the uh, the test. <clears throat> Lorena tuvo que estudiar anoche, entonces ella no pudo ir a la fiesta. Uh, again, you're going to have a, a little word bank that you can choose the right verb and then take it over here and conjugate it. Uh, I'm not going to give you verbs that make sense in both sentences. You're just going to have one verb that makes sense for that group of seven. Uh, for one, one verb that makes sense for one sentence in that group of seven. Lorena tuvo que estudiar. Okay, I already said that one. Elia no estuvo en la cocina cuando se cayó el vaso. Ando, ¿A dónde fuiste ayer después de la cena? Francisco y tú trajeron pastelitos a la fiesta. ¿Qué hiciste tú el fin de semana pasado? Alguien me dijo que el pasaje, paisaje de Niagara Falls es muy hermoso. En Elena puso la mesa. Uh, 
I don't know why I put an accent there. That should be puso. I will fix that. No accent. Boo. Bad, bad, bad. Okay, la mesa la seis. Now, let's go back to the Ida Ys that are right here. So we've got our ser, ear, ser, dar, and ver, and all of our regular preterites that do not have accents. And then the other two sets of verbs that uh, have a little bit in common are the Ida Y verbs and the stem changing verbs. And the reason that they're, they have something in common is that they are only affected in their bottom left and bottom right hand boxes. So the only verbs that are Ida Y are double vowel verbs, uh, words, <laughs> double vowel verbs, there we go. And they are only irregular in the LA and usted and the AOSAS ustedes boxes, that's what I just said. Verbs that end in UIR, so like construir, destruir, and distribuir, um, only have an accent in the I in the yo form. The other double vowel verbs have an accent on the I in all forms and on the O in the LA and usted form. No accents on the ellos, ellas, ustedes forms. Okay, so Berta se perdió su equilibrio y se cayó en las rocas. One person falling, so se cayó. Uh, las amigas no leyeron, no accent there. Los libros anoche. Uh, and what I was saying on the review is that maybe you still want to write out the verb. Maybe you still want to have that UIR and then take off the IR ending. And, um, and I don't know if I said this. These follow the regular... Um, uh, these follow the E-R-I-R -R verb endings except for the whole accent business. So if you're removing this U-I-R and then you're adding, let's say, for uh, right here for leyeron, okay, or uh, let's see, I don't have a distributed. All right, let's say the verb leer then. So I've got L-E-E-R and if I'm removing um, the E-R ending so I've got okay I've got an imaginary imaginary L E E R remove the E R and I've got L E if I'm going to add the I E R O N then I've got L E I E R O N if I were pronouncing that it would be Leyeron, and it's still making that same sound that the Y is. So maybe you want to take these verbs and write them out the way they should be, and then go back and change that I to Y. That's why they're called I to Y verbs. And that might help you with your spelling instead of trying to get this whole where did the Y go thing. Uh, that might help. Uh, mis amigos y yo estábamos escalando las rocas cuando oímos un, uh, un trueno. Greta no pudo oír. Again, I've got a conjugated verb right here, so it's going to be the infinitive after the blank. Jeremias creyó que la tormenta era muy peligroso. Uh, peligrosa, sorry. The other um, verbs that are only different in the ellos, ellas, ustedes forms are the stem changing verbs. And they are going to follow the regular ERIR verb chart ending. So back up here to the top, they're going to follow this box right here. Okay, so back down to the stem changing verbs. Nobody gets seasick. All right, here's how you know, and please follow this rule. It makes your life so much easier. First question, is it an IR verb? If the answer is yes, and only if the answer is yes, do you go to question B? Is it a stem changing verb in the present tense? If yes, then you've got yourself a stem changing preterite verb. That's it. And if it's stem changing, it can only be E to I or O to U. And if I'm looking at these verbs here, it's very clear to see, is this going to be an O to U or an E to I? In my stem, I've only got an E, so it's an E to I. I've only got an O, so it's an O to U. Okay? Um, and the nice news is you've only got two different categories instead of four like we do in the present tense. So, stem changing verbs are only irregular in the LA and usted and ellos, ellos, ustedes boxes. They use the regular verb, uh, ER, IR verb chart endings, like I said. So, I don't think I have any that are regular here, but... Um, if it was Juan, um, no, if it was yo, it would be yo me uh, diverti. So it would still keep that ER right here. But otherwise, it's se divertieron. Um, mi amiga Cecilia uh, prefirió, and then mi hermanita se durmió, and Marcos pidió un bistec.
I've got eight seconds left before this runs out, so you need to pause your screen and copy these down or check your work. Otherwise, good luck.